As equities market continues to trade mixed with a positive tilt driven by sustained interest in Transco and Dangote Sugar and UBA. Damlario Joe, head of investment research at Meristem, joins me now for more market updates. Uh, Damlari, thank you for joining us today. Uh, talk to us about trading today at the market, uh, investor sentiment and what stocks uh, they are buying at this time. Um, yeah, thank you for having me, Hesse. So the markets, this, I mean, so far this week, the market has been trending upwards. Uh, but if you look at the, the trading statistics, it's not been that um, impressive because um, the tickers that you would expect people to buy, investors to buy in normally, uh, the banking tickers, the bellwether tickers are not really performing as much. Uh, but altogether, you know, certain stocks have been pushing the market upwards, including um, poor foods particularly, and then your transport as well. Uh, but as it is, I would say there are no fundamental um, developments that are backing the increase in prices of these stocks. Um, I think it's just a bit of, you know, some directors um, could be most likely in, um, insider trading um, on, on this stock. So those are the key things that have been happening so far this week in the market. But um, overall, the market has been um, positive so far this week. Well, in terms of what's happening on the macro side, I know investors, uh, you know, sometimes uh, the market trades, it would appear that the market trades, you know, just shrugs off uh, rather what's happening on the macro side. I mean, high lingering inflation, high interest rates, uh, shrinking uh, cons you know, consumer spending, et cetera, and also impacting on, I would imagine, uh, investors' uh, outlook for uh, some of these companies that, you know, whose stocks are, that they have in their portfolio. But talk to us, what, what are investors concerned about for those who are actually, you know, taking a look, uh, keeping an eye on the state of the economy? The major thing that I think investors are looking at right now is the impact of um, FX, you know, devaluation um, on the stocks, I mean, on, on the performance of different companies. And if you look at the past couple of weeks, for the companies that have released their H1, you know, the first half of the year financial performance so far, particularly those in the consumer goods sector, you would see that a lot of them took a hit, um, a lot of, uh, you know, because of their FX liabilities. And then when you revalue that um, in, you know, at the higher exchange rates, that caused a lot of exchange rates, you know, loss for most of these um, companies. And for a lot of them, as for a number of them as well, um, they have some transactions with their foreign partners, with their parents, which, you know, are mostly um, in, outside of Nigeria. So they have FX transactions with these parents companies. So that's also caused a lot of them to have higher finance costs. So you have higher finance costs, higher um, exchange rates loss. Those are the things that have been impacting companies that have released their financials so far. And you know that's a macro, that's a big macro issue right now um, with the with the way that you know the the reform that we have around FX, um, which which has impacted a lot of these companies. But then you know the as it is negative for those consumer goods you know players, uh, we are expecting that it's going to be positive for the banking sector players because um, for a couple of the banks that you know are listed on the Nigerian exchange. They have, you know, long FX position. At least they had that long FX position as at 2022 full year and as at Q1 as well. And with a long FX position, you are expecting when you do a revaluation, um, you are going to record, you know, substantial um, FX revaluation gains in, in your in your in your books. Uh, but then um, these companies have not yet gotten approval from the, you know, they are still going through the audit um, with the regulator, the, the Central Bank of Nigeria. Uh, but in terms of macro, definitely, you know, we have high inflation. Investors are looking at that, and you also have the impact of um, FX valuation, which also caused a lot of, um, I, mean, I mean, a number of companies in the consumer goods sector, particularly, to record um, losses um, as at H1. So those are the key things that investors are looking at. But um, you know, most important is about where these reforms um, at the macro right. level are taking us to as a country. Um, which I think investors are positive about. Right. Now, so far, the uh, NGX uh, year-to-date market has returned uh, somewhere around 27% year-to-date. Talk to us about how this market, I mean, it's when the month of, uh, wrapping up the month of uh, August. Now, talk to us about how our market compares to its uh, either frontier or emerging market pairs, uh, perhaps from the dividend yield or EPS uh, standpoint. Yes. Um, in terms of dividend yield, particularly, um, I mean, maybe let me just start with the market returns. You know, for us, what we've forecasted is that the market is going to 
um, return for the full year 2023 is about 27%. Um, which is around the level where the market is now. I mean, if you round it up, the market is around 28% currently. And what that signifies is for, for a while now, our Nigerian market has been trading at a relatively um, cheap, you know, valuation relative to its its peers in the African region and the sub-Saharan African region. And, you know, from that point of view, right now, the rally that we've seen has taken Nigerian equities market up um, quite a bit. But it's still trading at some attractive level, particularly when we look at um, particular stocks, you know, particular tickers. Um, some tickers are still trading at, you know, relatively attractive levels um, compared to their African peers. But then the bear order stocks that we have, those are already trading. A lot of them are already trading at, you know, at, at P ratios that is above um, their peers. So some of them have already been priced out. I mean, in terms of in, in terms of market opportunities now, um, there's not much opportunity for gain on those pair weather stocks. But there are still a number of stocks that you know the growth stocks particularly, which is what we are aligning with right. uh, mostly for the second half of 2022. Now for uh, August. Now for August. Well, which names come to mind in terms of the, the August uh, best performers? Perhaps those stocks that have also outperformed uh, the benchmark index, if any. Um, well, for August, I think um, the most of them that have outperformed the market, uh, you know, you have FTN Coco, um, you, you know, you have a ticker like that, and you have some other, you know, you know, cheap, cheap stocks like that, and you also have some insurance um, tickers, Lasako, um, I think name as well. You know, you have those select tickers that are very cheap that have outperformed the market so far um, in in August. Now, which names come to mind for you for those uh, savvy save investors who want uh, a good entry or re-entry point for some stocks that have taken a haircut? Uh, well, I think um, I would align more with the consumer goods sector players, and this might be an unpopular, you know, opinion, given the fact that a lot of them. Um, the, the the future right now is not looking so good for them. I mean, particularly looking at the impact of the FX that I referred to earlier. Uh, but then looking at where we expect them to go moving forward, uh, we expect that there are, many of them are going to get out of the issue, uh, you know, after 2023 and right now um the price that the fact that investors have sold down on them presents attractive entry points so and why also, do you think that they're going to they'll be able to get out of that by end of 2023 i mean some uh, in indicators do not exactly point to that exactly so i mean two major reasons one is that a lot of them are going into uh, are currently doing price review uh, because I mean, inflation is high. You also need to keep up with that. Um, so price review is one that is going to also help them with having higher revenue, and that can trickle down um, to bottom line. And then two is that there are a number of reforms as well that the, even the regulator, I mean, or maybe the self-regulatory um, entity now, the Nigerian Exchange Limited, is trying to also help these um, companies with in terms of helping them to source. You know, FX allow permitting the the you know amending the you know um, listing rules to allow these companies to be able to source their funding also in FX. And if that uh, particular development, I mean, if that becomes something that is approved by the relevant agencies, I think that is going to be positive for these um, com companies going forward. All right. Now to wrap this up, what stocks do you like at this time? Uh, what stocks are on your radar? Uh, well, I mean, the banking tickers, you can't be tired of them. And um, then you also have the, you know, telco giants, you know, MTN particularly. Um, so I think, you know, those are the stocks that we are looking at um, right now. 